we know our cover image is a bit scary indeed. However, in this video, we will explore whether there is a connection to Ta'al Awakening Again and the Black Nazarene Day, which just took place a few days ago in the Philippines, as well as the coming Santo Nino Day, which is about a week away. When we head in this direction, we get our share of those who wish to marginalize Yahuwah's power, yet we do not ignore his ability to warn and to judge, which is very scriptural many times over, and we'll show you some of those in this video yet again. What is this Black Nazarene Festival, though? What is it? Ever see that in scripture? You will not. Just on Friday, Manila especially celebrated Black Nazarene Day, January the 9th, and there were over 10 million people in attendance, according to some estimates. What do they do on this day? Well, it's a massive procession taking 18 to 22 hours or more, in which all these attendees are hoping for the opportunity to touch or follow along with the Nazarene, the Black Nazarene statue. Some have even died during this celebration, in fact, trying to touch the statue. Many of them jockey for position to wipe a cloth on the statue which rubs off supposedly miraculous power, and they take that to their relatives and friends. Notice this statue sits in a cathedral the rest of the entire year, except the few times it's marched down the street. You know, one could just go a couple of weeks before or after and touch it, right? It is made out of a wood from Mexico, so that means it must be super special, right? No, it's meaningless. It's just a piece of wood fashioned to look like the homosexual son of a pope named Cesar Borgia. Yes, that is that image they call Jesus today. He was not Greek, nor was he white. So, how does Yahuwah feel about this kind of thing? I mean, is he really silent on the matter? You will never find a scripture that condones this behavior, but many that do not like it at all. Like Isaiah 62, I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifice in gardens and burn incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things, is in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burns all the day. The Philippines generally is in rebellion against Yahuwah right now. Let's call it what it is. Yes, we fully cover the incredible prophecies of its restoration in the last days, which is coming. But within Isaiah, he warns three times about their idol worship in these isles of the east at the ends of the earth. This must be dealt with, and soon. If it is not, judgment will come on a larger scale. You ain't seen nothing. And we are already seeing this today. Here is the smoke in his nose and the fire that burns all the day. You know, just three days after Black Jesus Day and one week before the Santo Nino Day coming, we have this awakening of Ta'al Volcano at alert level 3 as of today. This picture was taken by an airline pilot above the clouds even 
earlier today. Now we know some are already beginning to dismiss and ignore, and yet Ta'al is not just any volcano, my friends. It bears a Hebrew name very fitting in meaning to this situation, and it is prophetic. Ta'al in Hebrew means called out or summoned for a purpose. If you haven't watched Solomon's Gold series, you may not understand the connection to Hebrew in the Philippines. However, this is a wow. Ta'al in Hebrew is prophetic. Is Ta'al speaking to us? Is this the smoke from the nostrils of Yahuwah that we're seeing here? Well, we see this as no coincidence, especially in lieu of what happened recently in Deval and Southern Mindanao. But even last January, oddly, check this out. Last January, one week after Black Jesus Day, sorry, I keep calling it that, but that's the only way I can say it, and Santo Nino, which were only a day apart last year. Mount Myon began to awaken again, and it erupted the very next week. Now that's two years in a row, and we've not looked any further as of yet, but maybe it would be worth looking into. Oh yeah, there's another Hebrew name, in fact, is Myon is definitely Hebrew. Hmm, still think this is chance? Check this out. Did we already forget that a typhoon struck on Christmas Day in Visayas this year? Interesting. Or more so, Duval and Southern Mindanao just had five separate earthquake events over 6.0. And actually, Make it 6 with another 5.9, really, which probably was a 6. They always adjust them down. These just so happen to have occurred on or around Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, the biblical feast day that is not being observed in his land of creation. Remember, this is his land, and we are caretakers you will keep his feasts, or he will judge. That's it. Someone even said they would only believe this. If quakes continued on through All Saints Day and All uh, Souls Day, and there were three on All Saints Day and another on All Souls Day. So it did continue. Now then, there was another 6.8 or 9, depending on the report, in the middle of the Christmas season, 10 days before Christmas. These are major earthquakes, and this is not a minor event, because we just saw 6 of the 20 major earthquakes on record that have occurred in Davao's history since the 1890s, all in the last quarter of 2019. You do realize the significance of that percentage, right? In fact, in the past 100 years, over 80% of all of the earthquakes actually centered date-wise around feast days, biblical feast days, the seven feasts, or pagan holidays. Yet, he is sending smoke out of his nostrils and shaking the earth, and many are not even paying attention, but they will. Many Christians actually comment on the other videos that Yahuwah did not cause earthquakes. Well, actually, you would have to ignore a lot of scripture to make such a statement and really horrible assumption. He most certainly has, does, and says he will continue to shake the earth in warning. So what is the warning? You will probably note there will be some upset by this video, but the Bible offends, the truth offends, it just does. But we're to tell it regardless. 
Some Catholics will visit a video from time to time and claim, we don't worship Mary, or Black Jesus, or Santo Nino, or the statues of the saints, or Mary, or... Boy, they really add up, don't they? We venerate them. Oh, well then, I guess that settles it. Uh, wait, what does venerate mean? Well, it's Latin in origin. So Catholics should know it means to worship in Latin. That is its origin, period. And its first definition, even in English, is hmm, to worship. It's okay, though, if you admit you do not worship it, therefore you cannot venerate it either, then you will have no issue abandoning that practice because, of course, you would not want to offend Yahuwah, would you? I mean, doesn't he matter more than any of us? You know, we have lost that somehow in the modern church, but he is still God, and this is still all about him, not about us. Regardless of what someone may be preaching. He accepts no worship of other gods, idols, etc. under any circumstances, period, the end. We have covered the second commandments many times. Thou shalt not make graven images of, well, anything if you read this fully. But this is the Jesuit trick of the Holy Roman Empire, who indeed raped and pillaged the Philippines. Ophir, in ancient times. They knew your breaking this command would lead to a curse to the third and fourth generation, or 400 years. Yes, the generation is 100 years, not that of a man's lifespan in Scripture, because... Go back to Adam, and that's 900 years. Noah, 900 plus years. I mean, it, it, how do you figure out lifespans based on that? So, no, it's 100 years. But see, the Jesuits brought the nine commandments as the Catholic commandments. Skip the second completely because they want you to suffer the curse that comes from breaking it. Now, understand, that would have come from the office of the Pope, period. So understand who we're dealing with here. And the tenth is split into two, yet they are both about coveting and redundant. It is one of the most fraudulent sagas in history. And again, Yahuwah will spit this behavior out of his mouth, and he will judge those responsible, indeed. On this display in northern Luzon, they even include the all-seeing eye of Horus. Why? Well, because he is the son of the ancient goddess whom they venerate, I mean, worship, the harlot of Babylon, in fact, because that is her image. Don't believe me? Check this out. Here she is in 500 B.C., known as Selene to the Greeks. In 400 B.C., even with her son, look familiar? This was four to five hundred years before Mary was even born yet. Follow it through the ages, and oops, they accidentally put the image of the harlot of Babylon on Mary. No, that's no mistake. These are not Levitical priests. They are Zoroastrian, Mithraic, Babylonian priests, just as Constantine was high priest of Mithraism, that Babylonian religion, till his dying day. How did that get into the Roman Empire? That would be the fascinating thing to research. We actually will have videos on that in some time. Now, we love you enough to tell you about this, as Scripture says we should. We know some will find this uncomfortable, of course, but if we were all always right about everything, well, we would never learn 
anything. We too came out of steep indoctrination ourselves and even preached what we know to be unscriptural today from the pulpit. Unknowingly before, of course. Maturity is accepting correction, which is the action of the wise. Only the foolish reject. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. And the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore forgive them not. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of Yahuwah. And for the glory of his majesty, the lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And Yahuwah alone shall be exalted in that day. He is what it is all about. How would any of us ever wish to offend him? Of course we wouldn't. No one would purposely, right? Isaiah 2, and upon all the high mountains and upon all the high hills that are lifted up and upon every high tower and upon every fenced wall and upon all the ships of Tarshish, that's the Philippines, and upon all pleasant pictures and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down and the haughtiness of men shall be made low and Yahuwah alone shall be exalted in that day and the idols he shall utterly abolish. How about that? And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of Yahuwah and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. What? He shakes the earth? Yes, he does. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold. Why? Because he realizes who's more powerful. Those idols have no power. That black Jesus is a piece of wood. It's nothing. It's worthless. It has no value whatsoever, especially not in the face of the Creator God and His Son, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the cliffs of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of Yahuwah and for the glory of His majesty when He ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man, whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of. Isaiah goes on and on in whole chapters, and this is the last one we cover, about idol worship, because it is not a small thing to Yahuwah, and black Jesus is an idol. By every definition, and Catholics are worshiping him indeed. But see, he is not Jesus, Yahushua. He's actually not the Messiah, nor a representation of him. Because Messiah is still alive and does not require a statue. He can heal you if you need healing. This statue cannot. You can pray to him directly. John 14, 6. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by Him. Period. If this statue does heal you, that is called witchcraft by the Bible. It is not Yahusha, Jesus, and it is not Bible. The good news, however, is that it is time for this curse to end. As though Magellan came in 1521, he failed to affect the Philippines in the slightest, as they rejected and killed him, then rejected and killed his brother-in-law who replaced him, Duarte Barbosa, the famous Portuguese explorer. He was there with Magellan all along because it's his brother. 
And then they sent a fleet of ships to run the rest that were left over out of Visayas, which they did. And they didn't return until something like 1565. Now, it was not until June of 1599 that the Philippines would legally recognize its conquest by Spain. Thus, 1999 was 400 years. Did we notice anything happen after that? In recent times, we hear from many, especially when we're out there traveling and in comments and so on, uh, that have said that they are just tired of the corruption and they're willing to take a stand. We hear that all the time from people. And that's the people. We're not talking about politics or anything else. The reality is something's changing in the hearts of Filipinos. For what? But, though it is not the story, the economy just cannot be ignored. It's taken a giant leap since 1999. When you look at the last 20 years overall, it is a huge increase. Add to that, in the past 20 to 40 years, the Surigao treasure was found proving the Philippine history far more than we have been told that it certainly was the land of gold. Nine Balungai ships, as long as 80 feet in length and dated to 300 AD, were found in Butuan. Last year, in fact, even Greek armor was found in Mindanao and basically confirms and fits Pomponius Mila's mapping in 43 AD, where the Philippines is the Greek source of gold, and the purplest of the Eurythian Sea description that the Philippines, in fact, also was the Greek ancient source of gold. Again, not by the name Philippines back then. Then, the Benham Rise has been identified with major resources which were ceded to the Philippine territory by the UN. And we could go on and on and on. Yes, things are happening, they're happening fast, and they're happening big. See, the Philippines is in prophecy many times, as many of you already know. It will be the ships of the Philippines who will usher in the return of the lost tribes of Israel, and there are many such prophecies. But you are waiting, the isles are waiting for him to do what? To restore his law in this land. And that is coming, and that is why we are speaking up the way we are. In order for this to happen, these idols must be eliminated, period. So get rid of them now. Don't wait until you are forced to by Yahuwah. He makes this promise to you, though. Joel 2.25 And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. He will restore what the holy Roman Empire, the canker worm and the locust, has taken from this land. Proverbs says, if the thief be found, he must restore seven times. How about we restore his ways first? It is time, my friends, to stop beating around the bush and come out and say what needs to be said. He will restore this land. But we all must repent, restore his ways, and then we shall see the rising of this nation, this land of creation. Sheba will rise, and we hope you will all decide to be part of it. Yah bless.